Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Next View Podcast. I'm your host, Tia Moore. Um, it is Thursday and it's one o'clock, so you know that means we are recording our weekly podcast. If you saw my post earlier today, you know that I am I have a very special guest in the studio and I'm interviewing Derek Green from Get Your Move On Moving Company. So they're a local company here in Phoenix and we're gonna talk to them all about moving, the different services that they offer, um, what people can expect when they reach out to them and just get to know them a little bit better and why we want to be in business with Get Your Move On. So without further ado, our guest, Derek Green. How are you doing, Derek? I'm doing good, thank you for having me. Good, thank you for coming on. You're welcome. Appreciate that very much. So. Let us know a little bit about you. What's your background? Okay. What's your What's your unique story? So, well, I got a really <laughs> unique story. You sure you want all of it? Well, it. I grew up uh, McClintock and Southern. Okay, so Tempe. So I'm two blocks from here. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've ironically, I've lived my entire life in two square miles. Okay. So from the 101 and Southern, basically to rural and Broadway, I've lived my entire life. Wow. Okay. And, so you um, still live in this area? I still live in this wow. area. Okay. So I just left my house about five minutes ago to get Very here. Very cool. Um, and I really love it here. I've been all over the country because of moving. I've been in like 45 or 46 states. Okay. Um, and I um, have been to about 10 countries now, and I'm working on trying to go to different places. I'm going to Columbia next month. Very cool. So um, I've got a boy that's 10 and a boy that's 13. Okay. And in July, I'm taking them on a East Coast American History Tour. Very nice. And, with, and I'm taking my mom, too. We're going to go to Philadelphia, then take a train to New York City. Okay. Stay in Midtown, and then we're going to take a uh, another train to Boston. Okay. And so we're going to go see all of the Very sites. Very nice. Both of my boys are in swim, one by choice. Okay. One is by punishment because <laughs> he won't, he's not doing any other sports. So Making his him do default something. is going to be swimming. Okay. Um, my middle boy or my older boy, he goes to the same middle school as me mm-hmm. that I went to. Uh, I started my company um, kind of by happenstance. And uh, how, lo- how long have you guys been in business? Uh, f- over 14 years. Okay. So been doing it quite a while we have um, a management team in place we've got um, a middle management and then we've got about 25 movers okay and I'm sorry I didn't mean to cut you off you said you you started the business oh by happenstance happenstance. so that story is a is I was working at a furniture store in North Scottsdale okay and it was 2005 and I could kind of feel this demand for kind of a handyman mover somebody that could pick up a buffet and deliver to the sisters or go get stuff at consignment, or take, uh, or or do deliveries for small furniture stores, yeah. like boutiques that were popping up. Yeah. And my feeling, and the feeling was because we were delivering to these same people for Ladlow's, this furniture store in oh, yeah. Scottsdale, which is yep. still there. It actually. is still there. <laughs> and um, so I went to the Tempe Public Library, mm-hmm. and I got this book called How to Write a Business Plan. Okay. It was a yellow book. And I kind of did everything. I filed my LLC, uh-huh. and then I kind of did the business plan. At the end, it said, okay, now tell everybody about your business plan. Because mm-hmm. I had chicken and egg problem. I had no customers and no truck. Right. Plus, I had a real bad drug problem, and I had wow. um, no money and no credit and no anything, really. I wow. was kind of uh, in a, not in the but best spot. But yet you spot. still felt the need to deliver... I couldn't do that for twelve dollars an hour anymore. Got it. Um, and so, anyway, I the I so I'm at the dock, and I tell my dock supervisor about my business plan, just mm-hmm. like this dopey book told me to do. Mm-hmm. And he's like, "Well, you should talk to this guy Manny, because Manny does our out of state deliveries." Mm-hmm. So Manny was this dude that had these contracts for Robin Stuckey, which was this yep. powerhouse. Yep. Thomasville and Ladlow's, and he did all their, they all, all those places had their own trucks for local delivery. Mm -hmm. They had their own fleets, but then he did all their out of state. Okay. So I went to dinner with Manny and he said, basically I could become a subcontractor for him, which would get me the, borrowed the the trailer from him. And then he would borrow me these clients essentially. Okay. Um, And then I would get 75% of the revenue. Okay. So... Um, I did that for about four months, and I built up some receivables. Okay. 
and then my girlfriend at the time got pregnant. Okay. And I needed to like figure that out. So I stopped going on the road. It was the year of Katrina too, and gas was like five bucks, so it yep. was like burning all my money. Mm -hmm. So I um, I bought my own trailer because after I stopped going on the road for about two weeks, this money came in. Mm -hmm. I bought a trailer, and then I got an account at Airport Consignment, which actually is still there. Okay. And a place called Stratford Court which was at Tatum and Cactus. Mm -hmm. And that was, um, I just walked in there, gave my card and they like said, okay, we'll give you our deliveries. And um, then all of our, you know, I basically had a dude named Pablo and myself were on the truck for about three years, just every day, every day, so, seven days a week. So what did you do to advertise yourself? Well, that was the advertisement because wow. we were taking a buffet into the lady's house in PV and she's like, oh, you guys did such a good job with this. We're moving. Usually with the consignment piece, mm -hmm. that was kind of an indicator that they'd be moving. Gotcha. So then they're like, oh, you're the owner? I'm like, yeah. And I did the estimate right then, but I didn't want to move because I was lazy. <laughs> I just liked moving just the pieces. But then gotcha. I was thinking if I do $75 a delivery and I could max out maybe five deliveries a day. Yeah. But if I parked a truck at eight and charge a travel fee and I get done at five, mm -hmm. we can make like a thousand bucks a day. Right. So then I was like, oh, I guess I'll do all that extra work. <laughs> so anyway, then we just, and then I started doing packing. You were, you were in your 20s then, so you I were was young. 20, yeah, yeah, I was in my 20s. And ironically, for the four months I worked for Manny on the road, mm -hmm. I didn't do, I, I think I smoked one bowl of weed and drank one beer <laughs> in four months. Then I got back home St got started my business, like started on myself again, and then I took some pain pills for some reason. Oh my gosh. I got instantaneously addicted to that. And then I okay. didn't get sober until I was 28. So like in my fourth year of the business, mm -hmm. I finally got sober. Oh yeah, Messed sorry. with audio. <laughs> and so now I've been sober like 10 years. Congratulations and, on that. And the business, like I just try to, um, do everything that it needs. Like, like I'm just always trying to do excellent work for every client, make mm -hmm. sure that every client is, you know, absolutely blown away by our service. Okay. If there are problems, I like attack it with service. Like we're not perfect. And in the moving business, it, there, there's stuff that happens every single day. So I want to go back and close a loop mm -hmm. really quick. So, so you, you were, you had this drug problem and something motivated you to, to go sober. So what was that? Well, it was actually this funny thing because I had a one-year-old and a four-year-old mm -hmm. and a wife that her laughter was like nails on a chalkboard. Okay. <laughs> Not a good spot. And so I, I, I got invited to be in this group called Accelerator, which is like for, it's like a peer um, forum kind of mastermind okay. program. Mm -hmm. And I was in these all day every quarter they had a, a an all day um, workshop okay and I had to leave one of these workshops because I was basically a heroin junkie okay and I was dope sick at about 10 30 in the morning wow and I had to leave and I look around leaving this room and I'm like there's no way I can compete with these guys these and gals I mean these people were like priming themselves to be business owners since they were like 12 years old. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like I'm lucky that I got into this spot. Yeah. Um, and I was like, okay, so I, so I started kind of training this one mover that I had to like answer my Blackberry, mm -hmm. knew how to use QuickBooks, mm -hmm. knew how to use our little software that we had developed. Mm -hmm. And um, cause I knew I was gonna be completely worthless for like 30 days. Okay. And so that was like how I, and then I went to AA when mm -hmm. I couldn't stop on my own, I went to this meeting. And then ever since then, like I've just kept going to my couple, three meetings a week. Wow. And I stay involved, I sponsor guys. I mean, I, we have, our four top kind of, I used to call them honchos, but now that we have this management team, they're like their crew leads, but I call them still honchos. <laughs> um, they're all from like Salvation Army graduates. Okay. They're in their mid twenties and they're all sober. And okay. um, so we got this great culture and um, yeah, so that's, that was that was the impetus. I wish I could have said, oh, I looked at my kids and I missed them so much. Or, yeah. But, but the was, truth is, it was, it was I just, wanted to win at business. Okay. That was kind of, and I knew I couldn't. So, so literally, your trucking business saved your life. 
Or your moving company uh, saved your life. Yeah, I mean, I think I had um, my identity was in as a child was in sports, mm -hmm. and when sports didn't pan out because of drugs, yeah, then it just fed. Then I lost my identity. I mean, looking back during the, going through like my steps and everything, that's kind of what I've identified mm -hmm. as my challenge. And so I love to compete, and I already had blown that once. Yeah. And now I was going to burn down a second yeah. major opportunity, and I was just able to um, somehow get through it. So, yeah, so you could say that. You okay. could say that would be a good way to say it. But also, like, I've been able to become this great dad. Right. Um, I did was able to divorce my wife okay. without my house burning down. <laughs> um, so, um, and now I just, like, I really – am focused on being the Nordstrom of movers. Okay. And it's really, really tricky because it's extremely expensive. Yeah. Um, to, um, you know, take care of every client's every last whim and issue, even if it's not something we did, mm -hmm. we're still going to address it as if we are. So like one of our core values is humility. Okay. One of our core values is serving others. And the other one is being unique. Okay. We also have... Um, in addition to moving, packing, moving, we have a 60,000 square foot warehouse, mm -hmm. which really storage, I think is really the problem solver for real estate agents and their clients. In a lot of cases, your client um, was, was one example. I think right now about 30% of our projects and we're doing, we do about 140 jobs a month, 140 moves a month. Wow. And probably 30% of them have a storage component, whether it's a, a very short term storage component, mm -hmm. like overnight, mm -hmm. our warehouse is big enough in that we can park about 10 trucks inside Okay. right now, mm -hmm. maybe in four years, we'll have to figure out a new solution, <laughs> but we are, we are in a gated yard. We have cameras and security, but we prefer parking them inside. And in particular in the summertime, mm -hmm. it's cool in there. Yeah. It's evap cooled. So client has a simultaneous close, mm -hmm. they're just basket case, yeah, right? Because everything is up in the air. And everything about their transaction is like touch and go between the banking, mm -hmm. the loans, the, the <clears throat> um, title company, everything. the contingencies. Yeah. I mean, I remember going through it. It's like you never really think, is this thing even going to happen? Because <laughs> everybody's hedging their bet all the way through this process. You know what I mean? Everybody is telling them, well, because it's going to close, right? You know, as a realtor, Absolutely. everything always gets worked out, mm -hmm. but the client doesn't know that because they only do it once a year. See, and it's, I guess it depends because we have a very, I feel like we have a pretty solid team mm -hmm. where everything works pretty smooth. Usually it's at the very last day is when you crash land, <laughs> but it's not necessarily a big thing. It's just stressful because you're trying it's to get perception. everything. But I think our, I know I get mm -hmm. that, but our clients literally, because we, we talk to them before, during, after, in the day of closing, we have conversations oh. with them and they, I haven't had one person say, that they haven't had a smooth experience. They say, man, this is the best experience we've we've ever had well, working great. with the team. But we work really hard to make sure that um, the people that we partner with, title, mm -hmm. the lending the lending team, us, we make sure that- They're you know, all on the same kind we're of We're all on the same page. We're all making sure that that's our top priority. Are there some things that we can't control? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, but I feel like communication is the number one thing of, handle, of managing sure. that stress. Which was one of the reasons well, not why. Not all my clients have Tia Moore as a realtor. They should. They should. We got to work on that. We will work on that. <laughs> but I think that um, that was one of the reasons why I contacted you for Karen. Mm -hmm. Because I know how important to keep things. Because, you know, all our clientele is a little bit different. A lot of the people that we've worked with, they've bought and sold many, many, many homes. Mm -hmm. um, and they do it with us a lot. Or they do a lot of investments, different mm -hmm. things like that. Um, but... Karen, I know how she likes to work and I know what she expects to happen. Mm -hmm. And I remember you and I met on a home tour 
and I was impressed by what you what services you guys mm-hmm. what you said you offered and I never forgot it and your name is really catchy so it's hard to forget Thank get you. your move on and so I was like oh I know this company we cool. can call him there's some other companies that I know too but I was like I would start here mm-hmm. um you know I would start here the other company I referred was somebody that helped me with a flat tire I thought that was like pretty cool that they yeah, like cool. stopped and were able to help me out I had a flat tire at like Circle K or something and they I were like, like oh, that. we'll do it. And they, you know, they called that's their boss and he was like, yeah, we can do it. But anyway, that's a whole different thing. But she called, she met with you and she, she you know, we can talk about it, but she had a great experience. I actually think she met with one of my estimators. Oh, okay. I, well, I, I meant your company. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. I do get to look at a lot of our jobs, but not all of them. So, so. tell us about that. Tell us about. So anything what? over a 1500 square foot home, in our opinion, it should be looked at. Well, what I mean is, oh. tell us about if somebody calls you today because they're going to be moving, mm-hmm. whether they're going to be moving um, to a house, apartment, whatever, what should what the they expect? What process looks like? Mm-hmm. Okay. So typically we get a call about two to three weeks ahead. Okay. I recommend to realtors and to their clients, if you can call us a month ahead, mm-hmm. first of all, you'll be two weeks ahead on having knowledge about what you should be doing to prep. Yeah. And two, the last two weeks of the transaction are the busiest phone weeks for yep. the client. Mm-hmm. And so she may, or he or she may have um, an idea of, I'm gonna get all this stuff done, but then the day starts <laughs> and the phone starts ringing and yep. I gotta run to the bank and I gotta make these phone calls and fax this paperwork and send these emails. Yep. So if you can kind of get an idea, if you can meet with me a week, a month before, I can give you some things you can be doing in those first couple of weeks. Yeah. And I can advise on contingency planning. Mm -hmm. If you have those simultaneous closes or Mm -hmm. those multiple contingencies, or you have potentially a couple of days where you need to be in storage, then you can already, she can already feel like the anxiety is going away because she has a guy that's got her back that's going to take care of whatever happens. Yep. And having a mover that can handle the the storage pieces, I would say maybe only. 10% 10% of movers out there have their own storage. I agree. Most movers will, they might say they have storage, but they're going to take you to life storage, mm-hmm. which is really a double move. It is. So. And you usually pay for that. And you're usually going to pay yeah. for that. So um, once they call, they'll usually get the office number. Mm-hmm. I'm happy to take anybody's call anytime about absolutely anything. My yeah. cell phone is out there. I'm easy to get a hold of. Mm-hmm. But. I don't have as good a control over my calendar as my office does yeah. because they're at the laptop so mm-hmm. or they're at their desktops. So if you call the office and schedule me to come do an estimate, usually I can get out there within a day or two. Okay. Typically, if there's a crisis, I can get a job done in the next couple three days. Okay. But you know that's the worst case scenario. Mm-hmm. There's usually some failure along the way. Yeah. Or there's some cash buyer particularly up in North Scottsdale, that's like, I want a 10 day close. Yeah. And that happens more often than you would think. Oh yeah, we have a high, we had four of cash, of cash deals last and, month. And so what's happening a lot to, you know, we have a lot of affluent clients, but we also move a lot of apartment buildings in particular ones with elevators. Mm-hmm. Um, but in Scottsdale, in North Scottsdale, for instance, what's happening is people are putting their house on the market, mm-hmm. just figuring they got 90 to 180 days to sell Mm -hmm. and then they're selling it in two days they haven't bought a new house or their new house isn't built yet and we have to go in and pack everything and take it to storage so that's happening frequently um and also having an honest mover that's going to tell you the truth uh, you know movers have a bad reputation Mm -hmm. one of the there's i think there's five good moving companies in phoenix and I'm friends with all of them and we send each other work. We run into each other on job sites all the time and we get along very well Mm -hmm. and there's enough work for us because we're always busy. The rest of the guys are half of them are like truly bad guys. And there was another news article about this company that just got shut down by the attorney general. And it's all based on a 72, an 1872 court decision that protected movers from theft of services, Mm -hmm. but they created a contract that is very opportunistic for a bad guy Mm -hmm. to come in and rip people off. Got it. And the scam goes like, they tell you whatever it takes to get you booked. 
They'll give you some hourly rate that sounds too good to be true. Mm -hmm. They'll get your stuff. They'll show up on the 31st in the morning. Now, you don't have time to call another mover. Whoever's in your driveway is getting your stuff and moving it. Yeah. And whatever they look like, it doesn't matter at this point. Yeah. And so now you're scared. You're scared of the guys that are in your driveway. You're scared that there's no moving blankets on the truck. There's no packing materials. Mm -hmm. But you got to be out of your house. Yeah. What are you going to do? You're going to sign whatever they tell you to sign, mm -hmm. which is not going to have anything to do with what they told you it was going to say. And now you're in that contract. And guess what on the back of that contract says? There's a lien against the terms in the front of the contract against the belongings in the truck. And the mover has the right to charge you in cash or cashier's check prior to unloading. Hmm. So you haven't even seen what could be firewood at this point. That's definitely a concern. I, I would I would be scared about that. And but the, what I want to make mm -hmm. sure we don't lose sight of right. is when our clients, when if somebody's watching right now or listening on the replay, if they mm -hmm. call your company, what would they expect? You're gonna you're gonna call, you're gonna go out there and you're gonna give them an They're estimate. They're gonna schedule an estimate, we're gonna come out. Okay. Can we're they gonna, schedule online or do they have to speak to somebody? Um they, they, they're going to need to talk to someone okay. to get my calendar. Got it. To get in my calendar. But they can get, they can download moving checklists. They can download um, lots of resource guides from Got our it. website. It's getyourmoveonllc.com. Okay. Um, and there's a lot of information on our blog. I think we have like almost 200 blog articles about nice. preparing for moves. And there's tons of stuff to pour through on the website. Mm -hmm. But they call, they schedule an estimate. 75% of the time, I'll come out myself if it's okay. over 1,500. If it's under 1,500 square foot home, we'll do an inventory over the phone. Okay. We'll get all the details, stairs and whatnot, okay. and then we'll schedule the move via phone. Got so it. that's easy to do. Okay. If it's over 1,500 square foot, I'm probably going to come look at it. Got it. So then I'll come out. I'll look at it. We're going to review all the scope of work. So we're mm -hmm. going to say, okay, you're going to do this. I'm going to make recommendations about how to save money. One of the most common ways to save money is move your own lamps and artwork. If you're going to do work, pack fully. Mm -hmm. If you get done packing, move your art and lampshades. Do you guys offer packing? Oh, yeah. Okay. We do. We, we, um, we pack artwork. We pack lamps. We pack china, crystal, kitchens. Um, and, a, and a pack job will usually be a between a 50 to a 80% premium. Okay. So if your move is $1,000, you can maybe get the packing done for five to $800 additional. And it will usually be the day before. We'll Got come it. out and pack and prep. So once I pro so once we kind of clarify the scope of work, mm -hmm. I'll take a bunch of notes in my iPad, and then I'll also do a full inventory of the home, Kay. full inventory of what boxes we'll be packing, Kay. and then it'll be a very transparent line item estimate that Kay. will include all the pieces. Then the, they understand that the actual move cost will be based on the actual time and materials. I always try to overestimate. Mm -hmm. No one has ever called me and be like, Derek, it's 1 p.m. I'm done fi at, in five hours. I expected you to be here for seven, mm -hmm. and I'm pissed. Never happened in my entire life. Good. So people love getting done early. I send enough guys to get done in six to seven hours. Okay. Because that's enough moving. So let's just say, for example, Karen's move, their house is about 24, 2,500 square mm -hmm. feet, I think. And they, um, how many people move them? Just out of curiosity. Oops. Uh oh. Uh oh. Um, so her bed, I think we packed and loaded her up mm -hmm. to storage. Yes, yeah, she was in storage for a couple weeks. So she had two trucks and four men okay. for five hours. And she had hundred dollars in packing materials, and then her delivery was about seven hundred. So coming into storage, including first month, and so my estimate was that my guy's estimate was at thirty seven hundred to come into storage, mm -hmm. and the actual was three thousand. Our nice. delivery estimate was nine hundred forty five, and I know I saw her card charged for seven forty yesterday. Nice. So that's about ideal. Okay. Um, that's My good. So five hours, two trucks, and that included storage mm -hmm. and delivery, obviously. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and so, and she was done by one or two o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, they, she, she was done early because I called her yesterday. You guys delivered mm -hmm. her yesterday, and I called her and said, hey, how'd it go? 
And she was like, it went good. The guys finished up pretty soon. And she says, now I am relaxing and just happy to have my recliner in my house. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. And I would say 95% of the time, that's our move. Good. 5% of the time, there's issues. Five yeah. per- many of the issues are caused because the client doesn't prepare mm-hmm. like they were. They intend three weeks ahead. They have a lot of good intentions yeah. about what they're going to complete. Yeah. And I and I really spend time educating them about the importance of them doing what they say they're going to do. Mm-hmm. And if they don't, that's fine. Mm-hmm. But you got to let me know because then we can come in. If you don't get completely packed, mm-hmm. we can come in the day before. And if I know about it, I can set it up to do it efficiently. If we show up in the morning and you didn't pack your kitchen, we're still going to have to pack it. Yeah. And we're going to be there till 9 p.m. Yeah. You're going to be stressed out and frustrated. Yeah. And we're going to have to send material. So we're going to have to start doing things the, yeah. not the best way. Right. So it's all about, I think, communication and setting expectations, educating the client, yep. making sure they understand, you know, whose roles are, are you know, it, we got to work together. Yeah. It's a stressful day. Yeah. You're getting your check to you. They're going through the worst day of their year. Oh, for and sure. so we want to alleviate all that stress. It's the best day of their year, not the worst. Well, it's the best. S- some people just have <laughs> trouble with stress, you know. I know that. So, okay, so not only do you guys do moving, you know, a whole house. You mentioned it that you guys also do consignment moves. I saw on your website that you do moving for like interior designers. I guess if they're mm-hmm. bi- bringing stuff into a property, maybe staging too. Yeah. So okay. we don't do staging. Meaning if they have, if let's say an interior designer has a stage job and they want stuff moved from their storage unit to a property. And we can that. do that, certainly. Yeah. Um, however, I've been doing this a long time and the staging is so tight mm-hmm. that it's probably not the right fit for our company. Got it. Um, we work for interior designers. Uh, we have a brand called Plush, Plush okay. Installation. Okay. And that company, all we do is we receive extremely expensive furniture, artwork, accessories, rugs, Mm -hmm. and lighting for custom home projects that are under construction. Got it. Those are typically in Paradise Valley, Arcadia, or North Scottsdale, DC Ranch, Silverleaf. And these are, you know, a million dollars worth of furniture is being purchased Mm -hmm. for a $10 million home. Mm -hmm. While the home is being built, someone has to receive it all, inspect it all. Yeah. Go over with a fine tooth comb, photograph it all, c- check it off the POs of the interior designers, yep. communicate it all, and then when they get the um, certificate of occupancy, mm-hmm. in about three days we go out, we lay the rugs down, place all the furniture, hang all the artwork, put the drapes up, and then they have their little H home garden moment. <laughs> okay, good. But that's just a very small little niche. Okay. Um, more importantly, like that comes in playing much more often with get your move on is specialty items Mm -hmm. so we handle pianos pool tables um artwork crating um most movers will usually sub most of that stuff out Mm -hmm. or just say we don't do pianos got it we don't do pool tables and it's really inefficient to have to hire two companies yeah and coordinate it all yeah so i tell clients if they don't know how to move pool tables. I don't really understand why they call themselves a mover. I mean, yeah. you should be able to do those things. They're yeah. fa- fairly simple. Yeah. Um, so, and, and I is think... is that pretty easy to get on the schedule, a piano or a pool table? Yeah, because it's a small job for us. Yeah. So, you know, three guys for two hours can usually move a pool table, maybe three hours for a, uh, three hours for a pool table, two hours for a piano. Okay. Um, but... Let me think what else might be interesting. I think I think our crew, mm-hmm. the movers themselves, mm-hmm. are the thing I'm most proud of because I can, like, say all this stuff mm-hmm. and even my office administratively can really kill it, right? Mm-hmm. And everything is perfect. Communication is good. Mm-hmm. The client knows when we're going to be there. We get the follow-up calls, survey. Yeah. But if my guys walk in the door Saturday morning, smelly, drunk, stupid slow yeah. attitude rolling their eyes frustrated yeah it's all over yeah the whole thing's doomed yeah. late yeah so 
we have a culture of, of you know and an accountability system at our job that really weeds those guys out okay. I mean we're dealing with a pretty tricky um, I would say worker pool right now mm -hmm. because you have a very strong economy mm -hmm. um, and you really have to be picking second ch second chance people mm -hmm. because if you're on your first chance you're probably going to pick up a hammer and do some framing you probably don't have felonies on your record you probably have some college some you know good job skills and life skills mm -hmm. if you're humping furniture in august in phoenix something is wrong with your head you know <laughs> it's just like it's a mentality you got to be kind of weird like yeah. look at me <laughs> you, you saw my background I end up on moving truck yeah it's not like I didn't like spend my whole life planning on being on a moving truck yeah so I think we've done an incredible job building a culture paying guys well creating career professional movers mm -hmm. that are proud of what they're doing mm -hmm. working in the best possible moving environment doing the highest end moves like a really a white glove butler um, gentleman mover mm -hmm. and that's special and I think that's what we really defines us and then when there are problems that's when we really shine like yeah. I look at those as opportunities because if if my moving company and some dummy moving company both complete the job and I can do it 95% of the time with no problems and he can do it 30% of the time with no problems mm -hmm. if you take the 30 and the 95 and you compare them mm -hmm. might not be that big a difference yeah the other 70 and the other five, the other 70, I'm sorry for the client. Got it. It's too bad. But if you take my little 5%, that's when I really can create the differentiator. Yeah. Because we are, they call us the next day. We're going out to their house, finding whatever they can't find in their own home, which is very <laughs> common. Okay. <laughs> I mean, everything gets found, yeah. but literally the next day, Everything is also missing. Yeah. It's boxed. <laughs> and they're calling you, where's my passport? Where's this? Where's my shoes? Oh, it, you know, it's back in that shelf. Yeah. And so um, we are just like, we just stay humble. We stay like chill and we just work through those things. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of resources and it takes a lot of patience. Yeah. And everybody in the team, because that's, that's, that's like what I think defines us. Mm -hmm. So as I guess the leader, you know, I'm. I just keep saying, well, what do we need to do next to get them get it right? What, what what's the next thing? And yeah. and we just keep doing that until the cl client is like, oh my god, you guys are so amazing. Like, I've been so stressed out, but you guys just kept making it right. So good. I think those are some of the most important things: is our guys and our customer service. Well, awesome. Well, as we wrap up, tell people once again how they can get a hold of you guys to schedule so a move. So my cell phone is 602-820-3559. You can call me. Um, our office number is 480-695-6621, which was my high school cell phone number. That's so random. And it's been that I've had it, that number, I guess, for like 20-some years. <laughs> and then um, our website? website is getyourmoveonllc.com. Okay. And you can follow us on, like, Instagram is at getyourmoveon, and I think it's the same for Facebook, at getyourmoveon. Perfect. Move on. At getyourmoveon. Told you mm -hmm. it's an easy name to remember. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Before we go, I just wanted to give a special thanks to all of our partners that help us have a smooth business with our clients and, have, and help us make – each experience a unique and um, a great one. Um, Justin Oliver and Ryan Whalen are our preferred lenders, the Oliver Whalen team at Nova Home Loans. Um, we actually just talked to them this morning um, for a client and they definitely came through because they always deliver. So if you guys are looking to, you know, if you're thinking about doing a new home uh, purchase or you need a new, new mortgage or a refinance, make sure you give Justin and Ryan a phone call. Their number is up on the screen. If you have any questions before you reach out to them, you can also reach um, me. We are the Next View Home Professional Team. You can contact me, Samantha and Fabby, at 480-281-3078. So you can reach us as well if you have any questions about selling a home or if you have any questions about buying a home before you reach out to Justin and Ryan. Our preferred home warranty company, I don't know if you, she was there when you were, but it's Yvonne Hunter with Platinum Home Warranty. Mm. They are amazing, you guys. So if you are thinking about purchasing a home warranty, maybe you're buying a home, 
consider platinum or maybe you are you have a home warranty that's set to expire and you're looking to do a new one maybe you're not happy with the other company you were using contact Yvonne Hunter her numbers on the screen too and if you have any questions about pricing or anything like that I have all of her brochures I can text them to you you guys um, and then our preferred title company is security title we work with S, um, we work with Elva Palmer over at security title and Jeremy Eaton so if you guys have any questions like I said be sure to reach out to us here on Facebook or give us a phone call or a text at 480-281-3078 and reach out to Derek at Get Your Move On if you are looking to make a move or if you have a friend or family that needs a great referral. All right, you guys, I'll see you next Thursday. Thank you for having me. Okay.